Next, we're going to talk about cane fruit, so raspberries and blackberries, and also blueberries. Now remember, these lectures are just an introduction and a brief discussion about each of these different kinds of fruits, and we have included homework and reading assignments if you want to go more into depth in each of these topics so that you're not just watching this PowerPoint for an hour. So blackberries and raspberries. In some parts of the state, these are starting to come on at the end of June, early July, and many varieties will carry through all the way until fall, depending on what you choose. Wonderful, wonderful, tasty treats. So let's look at raspberries first. So raspberries are one of the most popular and easy to grow small fruits for Idaho gardeners, and that's because they are very hardy, cold hardy. They're also heat tolerant. They survive in a lot of different soil conditions pretty readily, and you can even grow them in containers if you really have to. But they're also very delicious. They come in four different colors, uh, red, yellow, black, and purple. And they produce either one or two crops of fruit each year, either in the summer or the fall, depending on which variety you choose. So blackberries, on the other hand, are better adapted to southwestern Idaho and parts of the states that are a little bit milder in the winter. They can be very cold sensitive. Some varieties won't even grow in, uh, in the Boise area, including some of the Marion berries and things have been known to freeze back completely and not grow. There are two different types of blackberries. There's the erect and the trailing. And I should also mention there are the thorny and the thornless. And the ideal ones would be the erect and thornless as far as ease of care and training and harvest. However, I hear lots of people say that the tastiest ones are the ones that trail and are covered with thorns. But there are lots of new modern varieties being developed, so I encourage you to taste test and try a few and really try to go with the ones that are going to be easiest to grow and manage. So with raspberries and blackberries, if soil drainage is a problem, like if your soil is really wet and heavy, then you might consider prepping your area to be raised up or to grow them in a raised bed about 12 inches high and 4 feet wide, and that's because they are very susceptible to root rots and other diseases that come from overly wet soil conditions. So some of the problems, uh, if you already watched the strawberry video, then this is very similar. Weeds big problem. Um, both grassy weeds and also broadleaf weeds can really get into your raspberry or blackberry patch and cause problems later on. And part of that is because it's hard to it's hard to hand weed around them and you really can't use any kinds of sprays because of the way raspberries and blackberries grow with suckers. Chances are you're going to hit a sucker which is going to transfer that herbicide to the mother plant. So very important to start with a clean bed use mulches, keep weeds out of there as much as possible. So another issue we find with blackberries and raspberries is people will say, well, I didn't get any fruit on them. And a lot of times that is due to improper pruning. And we're going to go over that in a minute. But if you have a summer bearer or a fall bearer and you prune them incorrectly, you may be eliminating your fruiting canes for that year. And that might be why you don't get any fruit. A very common problem, especially in the hotter regions of the state, are spider mites. And these are little tiny spider relatives. They're actually not an insect, they're an arachnid. And they feed on, on the leaf tissue and on the juices in the leaves. And they can cause kind of a silvery appearance or a bronzing. They can also create some webbing. And they're typically found in dry, dusty conditions. So later on in the summer, when it's hot and dry, and uh, we can talk about some, some ways to control that, and we're going to also link to a publication that goes into it in more detail. Some other common problems that we see is herbicide damage. So a lot of times raspberries are grown near other landscape plants or near the lawn, and they're very sensitive to especially 2,4-D or weed be gone type chemicals. Um, you'll see twisting, curling, distorted leaves like the picture here on the slide. So here's another interesting one that usually would come into the extension offices a couple times each year, and that is white droplet disorder. So that would be where you have a berry that a few of the little droops or those little sections of the berry stay white and hard while the rest of the berry turns normal color. There have been a few different um, conjectures as to what causes this. Some think that it might be stink bud, da bud damage uh, or high heat or sun scald. Pretty much the researchers now have agreed that they think it is a heat sunburn related issue. 
Um, sometimes it is co in concurrence with a lower fertility. So if the plants don't have a lot of nitrogen, then they may not have as much leaf color cover. And then the fruit is more exposed. Also, if you have very high hot temperatures, then you might get this problem too. Now, interestingly, this is a, a time when we say it's okay to wet your plant foliage. And honestly, that can help for spider mites too. If you're seeing this problem, make sure that your plants are getting enough nitrogen so that they have a good, healthy leaf canopy. And then every maybe two or three days, just give them a spray down with water, maybe in the morning so that it has time to dry by afternoon. And that can help cool the plant. And also it will um, create a condition that is not as much liked by the spider mites. So pruning raspberries. This is very important if you want to get the best quality fruit and you want to get fruit at all. Uh, I'm going to go over raspberries, though blackberries sometimes fall into one or the other categories too, depending on the variety. So there are summer bears. These are the ones that typically put on most of their fruit starting in late June through early July, mid-July, depending on where you live in the state. And uh, they are going to be putting their fruit on two-year-old canes. So the canes that grow the previous summer are the ones that will fruit the following year. So you want to prune these selectively, meaning that after they've flowered and fruited, you remove those canes and thin out the new ones in spring. And I'll show you some photographs of how this works. So fall bearing, this is the other type of raspberry, they can be pruned to the ground each year in fall, winter, or early spring because they bear fruit on brand new growth. So these are um, better for the gardener that doesn't have a lot of time, or if you have a lot of raspberries, uh, you can just mow them down each year and they'll regrow just fine. This can also be a good choice if you are in an area that's maybe more prone to disease or insects that affect the canes because you're getting rid of any of the habitat each fall. So here's a patch of raspberries. This is what it might look like in early spring. It's kind of a mess. You can see there are canes all over the place. Some of the weeds have come up. Uh, what do you do when you're faced with a situation like this? Well, first of all, you want to go through and clean it up and get rid of all the weeds and, and get that freshened up. Then you're going to look for the canes that produced last year. And if you're a gardener like me, you don't always do that during the summer when you have lots of other things going on. So I would usually come to my raspberries in early, early spring, and this is what they might look like. So first of all, find those canes that fruited the year before, and they are going to look much different. They're going to be coarser. They're going to look dry and um, cracked. And you'll also possibly see some of those spurs where you may have removed the fruit. And this is what those canes will look like. These are the ones that get removed at the ground level. So once you've done that, you're left with all the new canes that grew the previous year. They are going to look smoother, fresher, younger. They're, they may start to have buds on them to grow new leaves, depending on how long you wait to do this. But this is what they might look like. Now you don't need to leave all of those canes to grow. You want to go through and pick out the healthiest, strongest, straightest canes, leave those, and take out the rest. So this is what it might look like after you've thinned them out uh, and cleaned them up. And then on the last thing that you might do is you might actually top those canes, cutting off the tips, uh, leaving them about five and a half or six feet tall depending on how tall you are and where you want your fruit. You want it to be more concentrated where you can reach it and harvest it easily. And then put down a nice new layer of mulch and you're ready to go with those raspberries. This might also be a good time to install some sort of trellising or staking if the canes get really heavy with fruit and they start to fall over. So we do have a great publication on the U of I Extension website called Growing Raspberries and Blackberries in the Inland Northwest and Inner Mountain West. And again, like I mentioned in the strawberry video, this goes into much greater detail into variety selection, planting, care and maintenance, pruning, and common pests and disorders. Uh, all things that would take a lot longer if we presented them here on the slides. So please, those books are going to be loaded onto the course website for you to look at at your own pace. So a little bit about blueberries on this lecture too. So I have blueberries question mark. 
and that is because blueberries require an acid soil. So anywhere from a 4.5 pH, maybe pushing it up to a 6, and that would be at the high end. Most of the soils in Idaho are not conducive to growing bl blueberries. However, if you live in the northern or central part of the state, in the more mountainous regions with more forest soils, you might be able to grow blueberries actually quite uh, quite successfully, especially up in the northernmost part of the state. Really, they do well. But if you live in southern, southeast, or southwest Boise or uh, Idaho, then blueberries are going to have a lot of issues for you. They are going to suffer from the alkalinity. Uh, they'll often show iron chlorosis, and they'll just fail to grow and thrive. So if you live in those parts of the state, however, you can have some success growing them in large containers, pots, half whiskey barrels, some of those where you mix a nice acid soil with a lot of peat moss and a lot of forest-based compost. And we know lots of gardeners that are growing blueberries that way and having some success with it. So blueberries come in lots of different varieties, and so choosing the one best for you will take a little bit of research. And again, we have a wonderful publication, Growing Blueberries, online, and we will be linking that also to the course website.